So in this class, uh, we will discuss about the post-critical behavior of a typical cold form state channel section. So for uh, we, uh, we have to, I will take an example of a cold form uh, uh, steel channel section and uh, let us see how when we subject it to a moment, an external moment, uh, like this I have taken a sagging moment, so over a length for example, then how the uh, behavior of that uh, member will be. So that we will discuss. Now this is the uh, channel section I have taken and uh, M is the applied moment at the ends. So that means that the uh, member is subjected to uniform moment uh, throughout. In that case what happens? At the edges, at the edges that moment uh, will have more effect. So that means higher stresses will develop uh, at the edges. So this is the stress distribution. You can see here at the edges of the uh, channel section, you have the maximum uh, stress here, which I call as maximum stress on the edge stress sigma. Okay. Now, when you come towards the center, the effect is almost uh, less. So that means uh, there will be a less stress region uh, at the when you come towards the center of the uh, section. So, if I take this as the less stress section. You can always have uh, a uniform uh, stress distribution, equivalent uh, uniform stress distribution, something like this, which I take as the uniform stress as uh, sigma m, that is the mean stress, mean stress, which is assumed to act uh, over an effective width. So here b is the actual width of that uh, channel section, whereas b eff is the effective width of the channel section. So these two, so to analyze a problem, so what we can do here is this stress distribution, you see actual stress distribution, this can be transformed to a stress distribution something like this, uniform stress distribution, uh, stress distribution something like this, but it will be acting over an effective, not over the full width, such that uh, uh, this equation is satisfied. That means the product of uh, the effective width and the edge stress should be equal to the product of uh, your actual width and the mean stress. So this condition should be satisfied. Then only we can have the definition of this uh, B effective. That means B effective can be written as B into sigma m by sigma sigma. That is edge stress. So here this ratio B effective divided by B is less than 1 normally or at the most it can be equal to 1 if this B effective is equal to uh, that B. That means uh, here, what you can say here is this moment m is largely resisted by the regions near the edges. So near the edges, it is largely resisted. Hence, it is highly stressful. Whereas when you move towards the center or when you move away from the edges, it will be less stressful. Just like your Saint Pinot's principle in terms of materials, the effect of the external force uh, diminishes. Uh, uh, when you move away from the point of application of the force. So like that, this, this is the behavior, post uh, critical behavior of a typical uh, channel section when it is cold form. Now, this whatever the effective width is there, that depends on so many parameters. It depends on magnitude of the applied stress Fc. So applied stress is nothing but the whatever force we are going to apply divided by the cross-sectional area into an Fc and it depends on the F support also, F support condition also and also this B by T ratio that is width to thickness ratio. These are the three parameters on which this B effective depends. So as per the British standard code 5950 part 5, so there is a, a typical graph which gives the uh, of course, the relationship between the Fc and PCR. PCR above PCR, I have explained in the last video. PCR is nothing but the local buckling stress, which is given by this formula 185 into 10 power 3 into k into t by b whole square, which is in Newton per mm square. And Fc is the compressive stress on the effective element, which is also in Newton per mm square. B is the actual width of the element, T is the thickness of the element, and here k is the uh, buckling coefficient, local buckling coefficient, which I have explained in the last video, whose value is taken as 4 for stiffened element and 0.425 for unstiffened element. So now, 
even this value of Fc is less, is greater than 0.123 times PCR, then the ratio of B effective by B is calculated using this formula. So this is the formula which is given in uh, uh, BS 5940, 5950.5. Part 5. And when uh, this value of Fc is less than 0.123 PCR, then B effective can be equated to B. So this is the according to the British code. Now, when you plot a graph of uh, B effective by B versus B by T versus B by T for a compression plate, for a compression plate with simple edge support, that means the edges are simply supported and taking FIS 280 Newton per nm square. I told you uh, that uh, in the case of cold form steel sections, the FI value can be enhanced up to uh, 15 to 30 percent of uh, the actual value. Now, here if you plot a graph of B effective by B versus uh, B by T, so both are non dimension, non dimension or non dimensionless uh, parameters, you are going to get a graph something like this. So, initially it will be a straight line, then it, uh, it decreases. So, this B effective by B value decreases as the value of B by T increases. So, this is the uh, explanation for the post buckling behavior of a thin plate. Now, uh, that is similar to, thin plate is similar to your channel. Now, as per IS 8.1, this is as per the British code, as per Indian code IS 8.1, if you refer the pages uh, 6 and 7 of that uh, 8.1, that B by D values for uh, stiffened and unstiffened elements are explained there. So, there are certain equations uh, which give the values of B by D depending on the type of the element which we are going to use for analysis and design of uh, uh, that uh, cold form uh, steel members whether it is a compression member or a bending member so we have to study about the analysis of columns as well as beams later we are going to take a problem from that also only difference here is the notations are slightly different in IS 8.1 so the B is used for, for the effective or the radiation weight so here whatever B effective is there in a European code, it refers to B in Indian code and whatever B refers to refers in the European code, it refers to W in the Indian code. So B effective is nothing but B here, B is nothing but W here and this W by T, this ratio is nothing but your B by T ratio. So that B by T is, the ratio is called as the flat width ratio, flat width ratio in IS code. And this F is the actual stress in the compression element computed on the basis of the effective width. Of course, here in the code, he has given the formula uh, in terms of uh, when you use that formula, you are going to get uh, this value of F, of course, in terms of uh, kg force per centimeter square. Of course, this can be converted to Newton per ml square later on. So, because nowadays the unit uh, used for uh, stress is Newton per mm square. You know that 1 kg force is 9.81 Newton and 1 centimeter is 10 nm. So what we have to do here is when you want to convert this kg force per centimeter to Newton per mm square, this is the conversion factor. So you have to multiply by 9.81 and you have to divide 1 centimeter is nothing but uh, uh, 10 nm. Mm. So therefore 10 square. So that is 100. So into 9.81 divided by 100 uh, gives the value in Newton per mm square. So this is what, uh, so what I mean to say here is, so if you take the behavior of a typical uh, channel section in cold form steel structure, it behaves similar to a place. So here when it is subjected to the external moment, uh, so maximum stress develops at the edges uh, and uh, the minimum stress develops uh, toward the center and an equivalent uh, section can be taken by adopting the concept of effective width. Uh, so uh, over the effective width, we are going to assume that mean stress uh, will be acting such that this mean stress is calculated as uh, this B effective uh, into sigma divided by B or B effective will be equal to B into sigma m by sigma. So this is uh, the transformation of uh, actual stress distribution to the effective width uh, concept of stress distribution. Later on we discussed about the two codes uh, uh, which give you an idea about that uh, the ratio of uh, 
b by t and also the ratio of b effective by b as per the European code or British code. So this is the equation. Of course, it depends on the values of F C and P C R or the ratio of F C and P C R. So P C R is calculated once again using this formula. So where k value depends on whether it is stiffened element or unstiffened element. So four and point four two five respectively. And this is the graph which gives the relationship between B effective to B and B to T. And in Indian code, the only notations are different. So B effective is represented by B, B is represented by W, and W by T is called as the flat width ratio. And using the IS eight hundred one, you can always find out the load carrying capacity of a given cold form steel section.